In the first half of 2022, uh, we had a lot of internal activities uh, for product development and activities related to research advances, but quite poor activities related to uh, commercial uh, events. And uh, since approximately the second part of 2022, the external activities are regaining speed uh, with the possibility to uh, travel. And this is something which is extremely positive uh, and encouraging for us. So the sales team has managed to uh, go to many conferences across the world, which has been leading to uh, an increased number of very important leads and an increased awareness for our product portfolio in the world. So all this is extremely positive and this has really taken speed in this last quarter. Uh, also in the last quarter, we have started to be part of Sweden Bio and we have been increasing our uh, activities toward the Scandinavian ATMP uh, community, which means that we have uh, extended our opportunities to discuss with very important people who can help us advance our therapeutic uh, development program. So what we're expecting now, uh, end of this year and moving forward 2022, uh, 20, 2023, sorry, uh, is uh, really an increased activity uh, regarding ourselves. Uh, that's what's something that we're expecting to happen and, uh, and take speed. And also uh, increasing activities with, uh, in our two other business areas, which are uh, disease uh, models, in vitro disease models, and the ATMP area. So we are quite hopeful uh, that all these years that were difficult now are behind us. So, uh, first of all, I would like to say that I'm encouraging anybody who is interested to read our prospectus, uh, which is published on our uh, website, uh, because in this very comprehensive document, it's a very big document, uh, we are highlighting our three business areas, uh, which are the regenerative medicine area, but also the development of precision instruments and the disease model area. And we are also setting the goals for the next two years. And within these goals, there is exactly what you have been saying in your, in your question. And we have uh, extremely great uh, advancement between both the cardiovascular and the diabetes disease area. So it is complicated for me to tell you which of the two is going to be first to be tested uh, in vivo. Yeah, so human uh, tissue-based model uh, of our area, uh, which is a huge business potential uh, for free cell, and especially when it comes to uh, licensing opportunities with uh, big uh, pharmaceutical companies. And this is an area uh, which a lot of future potential, and this is mostly driven by the fact that there is increasing costs in developing pharmaceutical uh, product, 
but also a need from the pharmaceutical industry to get hold on uh, models which are accurate and give, can give some accurate data. So, and this is something that we can do uh, with the instruments that we have. So we indeed are working on the kidney, uh, the development of a kidney disease model, but also cardiovascular uh, disease model. So this is the two areas of uh, interest. And this is also uh, a business area which is going to grow because right now there is uh, the FDA Modernization Act, which is being uh, passed in the US which means that the need for uh, non-animal-based uh, models will increase and will be even more interesting for pharmaceutical companies to adopt. So this year is challenging and it came after two years of pandemic. So of course, this is concerning. Um, however, uh, fortunately, uh, free cell is not affected uh, at least by uh, directly by the war because we don't have any ongoing business, neither with Russia nor with uh, Ukraine. And what I would say is affecting us the most is the shortage in electronic components um, because we need them to uh, make our instrument like a lot of other companies. So fortunately, we have a supplier who has connection and has managed for the moment to overcome without big issue this, this problem. And we hope that it will remain like this. Uh, and what we do also is that we are working right now on a new uh, price list for our instruments. So all our price for our instruments being sold in 2023 are going to increase because we would like to uh, maintain a comfortable gross margin. So based on the increased customer interaction we have had since uh, the second part of 2022, what we can expect is really an increase in uh, commercial activities uh, in 2023 and also for the remainder of uh, 2022. We are also uh, expecting uh, to advance uh, our development within uh, regenerative medicine, of course, and also within the business area of uh, in vitro uh, models, as I was explaining before, because this is quite an important business uh, to target. And regarding the regenerative medicine area, we have put ourselves a little bit to the test and talked to uh, important actors within cardiovascular uh, and uh, uh, diabetes research uh, or disease area uh, lately. And their feedback were extremely positive. So we know that we are on the right track with what we are doing. Uh, so this is extremely encouraging. So this is something we are going to continue. And one of the goals for 2023 will be, of course, to sign uh, several collaborations of interest with major actors within those areas. Mm -hmm.